I, I will speak about um, a phenomenon that is connected with uh, vortices and vortex filaments, however, not directly in uh, uh, fluids or in equations in fluids. Uh, however, the, the, the reference problem, or the problem I, I will remain the most of the talk to, uh, is a two-dimensional equation, a two-dimensional parabolic equation that again has some resemblance with the with Navier-Stokes equations in uh, in uh, the sense that you have a nonlinearity, which is this leaf term, yeah, and uh, which is uh, coupled actually, well, it has a non-local character and it is coupled with Newtonian potential of the solution itself. So. I, um, the type of uh, concentration phenomena or singularity formation that you see here is also connected with uh, what you see in Euler equations in the sense of some specific profiles uh, playing a very, a very special role, an apparently very special role. Uh, well, in fact, that will be the part of the topic in Yunchen Wei's talk uh, for, the, for the true Euler equations. Anyway, so um, this is the keller siegel system in R2. The keller siegel system is a popular model for chemiotaxis. Uh, it is not hard to explain what it, what it means, what, roughly what it means. So uh, I care here about positive solutions of these equations. And this is simply a heat equation uh, modified by a drift term, yeah? Um, so U is represents here only population density. So the total population is assumed to be constant, say, which, which means uh, mass is preserved. Say, say you assume certain nice behavior of infinity and then uh, sufficient smoothness, and then you will see pre preservation of mass in this problem. Uh, now, uh, what makes the difference between the usual heat equation in which you see uh, things diffusing kind of uniformly, and forming as asymptotically spherical things, um, largely dispersed, okay? um, is that um, this term, the first order term, induces a preferred direction now for the for the motion of the of the particles or of the bacteria. Say. Um, in fact, they they want to measure. Uh, in the direction in which a certain chemical is being produced, a chemical produced by themselves. So supposedly this uh, bacteria also produce this chemical called the chemoattractant, uh, towards which the bacteria want, want to go, want to approach. Now, uh, each of the individual bacteria produce, produces a certain quantity, okay? And the total contribution at a given point is given by some weighted average of the contributions of each individual um, in the population. And we choose for, because it's nice, but we, we, we could have made uh, other choices too. We, may, we, we assume that this interaction is the, given by the Newtonian potential. So the chemotractant or the total concentration of the chemotractant is just a summation of contributions, a weighted sum of contributions by, uh, represented by this convolution. Okay, so this is the, um, this is, uh, the setting that I would like to talk uh, about. Um, now, let me comment about certain similarities and differences between this uh, diffusion model and the clean diffusion just given by heat equation. Uh, well, as I mentioned before, so a similarity that we may immediately see is the fact that mass is preserved provided that the initial condition uh, is sufficiently fast at infinity. So, okay. And, uh, uh, and this, is the, this is a direct consequence of the uh, diffusion of the divergence form of the equation. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, now, we have a, here is essentially a proof, okay? Say in the, at the in boundary integrals, what you see are these guys, and these guys actually formally go to zero. Uh, 
nicely as long as u dk is sufficiently fast. Fast meaning of the order one over distance to the origin squared, which is the limit for the for the for integrability uh, of u. So uh, now the, there is a second identity which is um, similar and different from the usual diffusion uh, for the standard diffusion for the standard heat equation. Is it is called the second moment identity and states again under sufficient sufficient regularity and sufficient decay at infinity for the solution. The decay, I mean, space decay. Uh, it says that the rate at, uh, of uh, at which um, the second moment of the solution represented by this um, quantity uh, evolves is uh, given by this by this constant. So it is constant, and that constant can be computed, and it is exactly this one. Uh, just to mention what happens in the heat equation. The heat equation is similar, except that this term n over a phi is not present. So you just see four n, which means that the second moment, which is a measure of the dispersion of the of the, of the population in in the plane, uh, is growing and is growing linearly. Yeah? And, and in fact, it is proportional to the mass, uh, to the total mass. Uh, okay, so just just quickly to to see why this is true. Um, and it is formally true. So if you differentiate the second moment, if you differentiate the second moment, you you, you have this uh, this identity, and uh, this integral up here, you integrate by parts, okay? and, uh, assuming that you can do it, of course, that that you decay sufficiently fast at infinity, and uh, and you see this for the Laplacian of x squared, and this is how the four m comes, just like in heat equation, okay? And this term is a little bit different. And uh, if you carefully compute it, uh, you see uh, you see what it leads to. Say we here we recall that uh, this function v is uh, the Newtonian potential of u, and using that you have this very nice identity okay. just by re rearranging the integral. And you see that this this integral is simply m squared over two pi, and eventually that tells you that you have. Uh, this, uh, the validity of this identity. Okay, what is, as a consequence of the second moment identity, uh, we see the following. We see that if the initial second moment is finite, then the second moment grows linearly. Well, it grows or decays linearly because uh, it is equal to the initial second moment, which I assume finite, of course, and uh, plus this uh, quantity that depends on the mass times t. However, there is something funny about this number, right? Because uh, if, if, if the mass is small, m is less than a pi, then, uh, this, then that means that the second moment is growing and the, uh, this mass is, disperse, is uh, dispersing, evolving and dispersing at, at a linear rate. On the other hand, if m is bigger than a pi, this coefficient is negative. And if, and if this coefficient is negative, then you see what happens. If you, if you let t be sufficiently large, then the right-hand side here becomes negative, right? However, it's positive, and so the left-hand side is always in a negative quantity. So that is, that, that is, of course, a contradiction if you take time t is sufficiently large, which means simply that the solution simply couldn't exist or couldn't be defined uh, for at all sufficiently long times. Um, so uh, if the mass is bigger than a pi, which means that this number is negative, the solution cannot remain smooth beyond some finite time. Uh, in fact, what we have in that case is that the solution blows up in finite time, of course, unlike heat equation. If the mass is equal to eight, to eight pi, instead you see another phenomenon which is um, different. I mean, you don't see this in heat equation. Heat equation, you see the population dispersing in a sort of uniform way indefinitely. Instead, uh, here that dispersion is becomes constant. Huh? The second moment of the solution is preserved if the mass is equal to eight pi because this number is zero. 
told the second moment is constant. If n is less than a pi, instead, as we might expect, the behavior becomes more like that of the heat equation. Um, in fact, uh, when m is less than a pi, um, the behavior is that of the heat equation conveniently modified. Um, I could mention here uh, works by Blanchet, Dolbois, Pertam, and earlier work by Jagger and Lukau. Uh, Blanchet, Dolbois, Pertam uh, actually found the asymptotic profiles uh, the, uh, for the solution, which, is self, which are self-similar and imitate a little bit the one of the uh, of heat equation, but they are you, they are more subtle. But this is the but that's essentially the behavior. Uh, when the mass is less than or equal to a pi, just to, to point this out, the solution leaks actually at all times. There's no blowback. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let me mention something else about the folklore of this problem. Is that the when the mass is bigger than a pi, as I already mentioned, blow up happens. Yeah. Um, this blow up doesn't happen in a random way. Actually, what we expect is that the particles or the chemoattractant actually induces a big concentration of the bacteria around isolated points. Yeah? This is uh, the way this is expected to behave. And uh, in fact, um, uh, what you expect to see is that the, is that the function u concentrates and form a finite set of Dirac masses, each of them with mass uh, at least a pi. I will comment. I mean, it's not surprising that a pi is playing some role here because precisely you will see blow up only if the mass is bigger than a pi. Um, a very important result in this line is due to Herrero and Velasquez. Uh, already quite a few years ago, yeah, Herrero and Velasquez proved uh, that, um, I mean, constructed actually radially symmetric solutions uh, with mass a little bit above a pi and found precise asymptotic behavior of those. Okay? They blow up exactly at the origin, only at the origin, and you see the profile that is. Uh, giving you a contribution of mass a pi. Okay, and here are subsequent works. Um, and, uh, and, and, and an interesting work in this line is much more recent, it's by Rafael and Schweyer. Rafael and Schweyer uh, actually uh, elaborated the construction of the radially symmetric solution that blows up at finite time that also uh, provided some the validity of some statement of stability inside the radially symmetric family, namely somehow that the blow up a stable phenomenon in the sense that if you perturb a little bit, you will see a, a blow up configuration which is very much of the of the exactly the same form. Okay, maybe at the at a slightly different time. Yeah? Uh, much more uh, recently, uh, I can mention this. Um, work by Collot, Gold, Masmoudi, and Guillen in uh, uh, la, uh, last year, um, they found yet another method which gave rise to a much more precise description of the asymptotic profile, method of construction. I'm always talking about constructing uh, radial, um, radial solutions. And with this new method, they, they actually managed to even found a non-radial stability of, uh, of this phenomenon. So they, it is a, a line of two different papers in which, uh, very interesting papers in which one of them is uh, finding some difficult, I mean, non-trivial spectral estimate uh, from where the non-radial stability follows. Okay, um, now, uh, let me mention um, what is the role of a pi, a pi of this mysterious number a pi here. Yeah. Uh, the, the equation you can write in the in, in this form in divergence form looks like this. So Laplace and inverse, I always by Laplace and inverse I always mean Newtonian potential. Okay. 
Uh, if I define this, this uh, functional, uh, which in the case of heat equation only represents, a, I mean, it's usually called entropy. Right? So this uh, entropy energy, this entropy functional, uh, turns out to be a Lyapunov functional for the keller siegel equation up here, in the sense that it is uh, decreasing, in fact, strictly decreasing, uh, uh, along non-trivial, I mean, non-constant trajectories of the uh, of the of the problem. Uh, in fact, you have the validity of this identity under sufficient irregularity decay and so on. And uh, you see when can this be zero? This can only be zero when this log u minus Laplacian inverse of u is constant, right? Because gradient will be zero exactly at those right? at, at, at those uh, objects, uh, and that means precisely the steady states of the equation because you see that the equation also has these factors here. And, uh, and you will see then that the um, function V given by log of U satisfies this equation down here. Simply minus Laplacian V C to power V. And this is of course a very well known object, uh, the Liouville equation, the Liouville equation in the plane. Uh, many things are known about the Liouville equation. In uh, particular, something that is well known is that it's a classification result for all solutions with finite mass. Finite mass meaning finite mass of, of the right-hand side of E to the V, which, which is U, right, naturally. And uh, it turns out that all solutions with finite mass are known, and that precisely given by scalings, translations, and mass-preserving scalings. This is up to, so this scaling here preserves mass, where you see there is this nice bell-shaped function that decays like one over rho to power four. Uh, two things uh, are in order to, to point out. Uh, one is that the, um, they all have the same mass and, and the mass is precisely eight pi. Not surprisingly because eight pi, because a steady state lives at all times, right? And, and it's non-trivial. And the only situation in which we were seeing that was precisely uh, initial mass eight pi. Validity of um, all time existence. Uh, and in addition, uh, the entropy functional is invariant under uh, uh, say for this uh, particular function. Say you, you see the same value always. Okay? Yet another thing, say as you can immediately see, this u0 is a function that decays to zero at infinity, rather fast, right? One over rho to power four. And uh, as lambda goes to zero, these uh, functions actually approach a Dirac delta centered at the point side, right? a Dirac delta with mass a pi. So this is a characteristic of these uh, bubbles. Okay? They concentrate and they concentrate by um, with mass a. Pi. Okay. Um, let me point out something that I will not really use, but it's, it's interesting to to. Have it to have in mind is that they uh, these functions u lambda psi are extremals for uh, an optimal inequality uh, for an inequality uh, concerning this ent the entropy function the associated the upper function. Um, in fact, these functions minimize uh, the the entropy functional that I showed you before under the constraint that the mass is exactly equal to eight pi. Uh, in fact, uh, this is, um, on the other hand, uh, maybe, maybe it is good to point out the following, is that uh, since as the, as the number lambda goes to zero, this family of objects uh, approaches a Dirac delta, then um, you see what happens uh, in the language of the calculus of variations. There is a, lot of, a, a phenomenon of loss of compactness. In the sense that the functional uh, loses the palace male condition along this family, in the sense that when lambda you have a sequence of critical points okay, of the with, with same energy, and however, with the characteristic that as the parameter goes to zero in this case, uh, you get out of the space where this energy is defined, which is L1, okay, at least L1 log and, and more. Okay, 
much more than in one dog. But but this is uh, this is uh, this is an issue. So the um, the function that loses the palace male uh, function. This is uh, this is uh, what makes the problem in a certain sense uh, common in the calculus of variations. Uh, is uh, we can say that the problem is critical. Uh, and in fact, this criticality uh, feature um, is closely connected with uh, the blow up phenomenon in this problem. Okay, um, what is it known about the critical mass, mass case? In fact, I will devote most of my talk to the critical mass case. Yeah. Uh, in, the, um, in the critical mass case, the following is known. If the initial condition is zero, uh, then it uh, works by Blanchet, Carden, and Carrillo, and then um, expanded by Carden and Figali. Uh, they proved, or say, say it is known, that uh, the family of steady states is asymptotically stable. Uh, in fact, if you start from a steady state and you perturb it by something with finite second moment, this is an important observation that I didn't make yet. The, um, the steady states, okay, the steady states, maybe you can see the formula, are all functions that are scales of this guy, right? This guy decays like one over x to power four. So if you try to compute the second moment, you see x squared divided by this gives you one over x squared, right? And then, so one over r squared. So if you integrate r dr, because we're integrating in r2, the, the, the integral is, inf is, is infinite. Okay. So finite second moment is not present in the, um, in the steady state. The steady, the, steady, the steady states have infinite second moments. Uh, and what they prove is that the family is uh, um, asymptotically stable in the sense that if you start uh, from steady state, and then you perturb it by something with finite second moment, this is roughly that statement, uh, then as time goes to infinity, the solution approaches in certain, in a suitable sense, the family of steady states. Okay? Maybe not necessarily a single steady state in principle, okay? but uh, it, it does so. Uh, in fact, oscillatory instabilities between steady states um, uh, can happen. Eh? By the way, there are some interesting examples by these authors, relatively recent. Um, and then uh, let me mention this result, which is connected with what I, I would like to uh, tell you, um, which is this work by Blanche Carrillo Masmudi, 2008. Uh, they proved the following. They, they proved that uh, if in addition to having the critical mass, so a pi, we assume finite second moment, of course, this excludes, this condition excludes the steady states. Then it turns out that the solution as time goes to infinity cannot remain bounded. Yeah. In fact, it aggregates in infinite time in the sense that what you will see is a profile of this form. Say this, uh, this is, will look like a steady state sharply scaled by a parameter lambda of t that goes to zero. So what that means is that you, in fact, goes the direct delta as time goes to infinity, a pi times the direct delta. Yeah, they found no information about the blow-up rate. Okay, uh, even though the blow-up rate was not the blow-up rate uh, at which this can happen uh, was not known, uh, there were uh, before and after some formal works. Uh, in which this, um, this scale was detected. Lambda of t is of the order. Uh, actually, there should be a constant here. Okay? It's, similar, it's equal to at main order to certain constant divided by square root of log of t. Yeah? This is the key scale. Okay? Uh, Golan Masmudi, uh, the paper was recently published, but the preprint is a little comes from a little earlier. Um, they managed to build a true radially symmetric solution with uh, with this profile. With this profile, I mean this one, in which lambda of t is this one over square root of log of t. Yeah. Uh, 
they also managed to establish stability of this blow up phenomenon of this type of profiles inside the radial class. Let me emphasize that because this uh, phenomenon here, in fact, holds for any initial condition in my say pi, not, not, not just radially symmetric. However, the stability of that of the radial of, of the radial profile that they constructed is only known in the uh, radial class. Full stability, in fact, uh, was they they were explicit to to say that they 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 didn't find. Um, our main result uh, provides a construction which is, uh, in fact, quite different from 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 theirs. Uh, that provides that the statement of stability of the phenomenon. Let me then explain what, what I mean by stability of the phenomenon. Um, it turns out that there exists, there exists an initial condition. In fact, I don't say that here, but that initial condition, there, there exists um, um, a condition, uh, this, this, this function can be taken radially symmetric. Okay? There is a radially symmetric function with mass a pi, yeah, and finite second moment such that for any initial condition, the keller siegel equation, which is a small perturbation of this U0 star and has the same mass, the solution has exactly this form, exactly the same form. So the difference, uh, uh, say, with uh, Gold, Masmoudi, uh, situation is that these initial conditions are not radially symmetric. Yeah? Are not necessarily radially symmetric. So, for any initial condition that has mass a pi that, and that is close to this initial profile, radially symmetric, then uh, you will see this. Of course, the, the point at which the, um, uh, this, is, uh, this happens, the, about where the blow up happens, Maybe slightly shifted from the radially really symmetric, certainly. Right? Uh, I didn't mention that, but this equation also preserves center of mass. Okay? Essentially, this point two would be the center of mass of the initial condition. Oh, and the, also in, in reality, the lambda t becomes a slightly modified also in the in the in the number the constant up here. Okay, so that's our, our, our main result. And I would like to tell you more or less how the, uh, how the proof goes. Uh, no, I mean, maybe rather than tell, telling you the proof, I would like to tell you why this phenomenon is true, okay? So I will give you an argument that is a little bit formal, okay? But that however is behind the true proof. Uh, what we look for is a solution of this equation. I call S of U the operator defining the keller siegel equation. And what I want to find is a solution U, which is close to U, U0, which is the bell shape, okay? At Y, where Y is X over lambda times one over lambda squared. I want, I want to find a solution that at main order looks like this, at least near the origin, okay? I am talking about here essentially radially symmetric. Yeah, and here lambda of t is greater than zero and goes to zero. Now, uh, let me make the following initial guess for the solution. The, uh, I guess that the solution behaves like this. Like, since it has a finite second moment, it cannot be equal to this or close to this all the way, right? It will be close to it until a certain distance from the origin. And because of the, since the, the, the equation is a main order heat equation, it is not unreasonable to cut off these initial answers by the self-similar regime X over square root of T. And I let this parameter alpha uh, here be modified so that the mass is not modified because the mass has to be pi yeah, in order to have blow up. Yeah. Okay, what I will uh, tell you is the following. First is that alpha, uh, for given lambda or small lambda. Uh, in fact, alpha of t with this definition um, is of the order one plus some number of order lambda square over t. Yeah. And I make the mass a pi. Okay, let me tell you the following. What I would like to make is a local correction 
uh, around the origin, near the origin, expressed in the same scale and the scale of the bubble, uh, so that the error of approximation is improved. And I will tell you how lambda has to be chosen in order to, for the error to become small. So this, uh, let, me, let me try a correction of the capital U by this bar phi, okay? This is one over lambda, lambda square phi, y, y t, uh, where y is, is the scale, the, um, the scale variable x over u. Well, uh, after some computation, what, you, what we find is that the, you can express the operator, the keller Siegel operator at u plus this correction as the initial error plus a linear operator, which is the one down here, uh, minus phi t, okay? And plus some smaller order terms that I will, for the, for the purpose of, 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 our, of the argument, I will, for the moment, neglect, yeah? Uh, in fact, I will also neglect this one because it becomes a posteriori small. Uh, let me mention that this LU of phi uh, can be exactly transformed uh, to this quantity, L to power minus four of L zero of phi, where um, at least when X is much less than square root of T. Uh, and, um, and in fact, where this L zero phi is this non-local operator. It's, the, it's a non-local elliptic operator. And the non-locality is, uh, is reflected by this, by inverse Laplacian here. In reality, it is hiding a fourth order operator, right? Um, now, in order to improve the approximation, what I need to solve, therefore, is the, um, the, um, is the equation that this, uh, that, that this is approximately zero, right? That the sum of this and this is approximately zero, and that corresponds to this equation down here. Yeah? And I would like also a solution decays rather fast in order to have finite second moment in it. Yeah? And the power four, a little more than four is fine. Anyway, uh, I will not give, give you much detail on this. The fact is that in the really symmetric space, at least this problem, this linear equation is not hard to solve even in explicit way. Uh, if you assume that um, the, 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 actually the linear operator can be written in this way, simply this divergence form operator at, uh, at some function g, where g is precisely this, phi over u zero minus inverse Laplacian of phi. Now, I assume that this, uh, the error is really symmetric just for the sake of argument, and that the mass, and that its mass is zero. It is, and then you can find this expression for g. This is, this is immediate, right? I mean, you, you, you immediately find this expression where, uh, and this guy decays like y to minus six. In reality, uh, what you see then is that the psi, which is the inverse Laplacian of phi, must satisfy this equation. What is this? This guy is seeing the linearization of the Liouville equation around the bubble u0, okay? And uh, it turns out that what you have to solve for psi is this with u0g in the right-hand side. And psi will be bounded. You can always only find a bounded solution to this equation using spread from alternative, only if this guy is orthogonal to the bounded element in the kernel, say two orthogonal to the bounded element in the kernel of this operator. In fact, you see that immediately, that bounded term is in fact connected with this, uh, that, that orthogonality condition leads you to this, uh, to this, that G times Z naught has to be zero, where Z naught is the generator, of, is this function, which is the generator of dilation, yeah? of the group of dilations for you. Uh, now, uh, this is an immediate complication. Say if you have a, the, the second moment of the error in case you have a solution of the equation, yeah, uh, is precisely given by this identity. It's precisely given by this. So second moment of the error is precisely zero when this guy is zero. So you can always only solve for psi bounded if uh, this second moment of the error is zero. So this is the conclusion. The conclusion is that you can actually find a nice, a nice decaying solution for, a, for, a, for phi in case that the right hand side has mass zero on the one hand side, on the one hand, and zero second moment in the other hand. 
Yeah, and therefore what we need in order to solve the, the problem to, to improve the approximation, yeah, uh, we need to solve this equation. And what we need is that the second moment and the mass has, have to be zero for the error, for the SOC, at least at main order, right? Uh, well, S of u is explicitly given by this, which if I separate between S1 and S2, um, which is one where S1 is simply minus capital U T and the other is this operator, then immediately you see that the mass is zero. Why? Because the integral of u is a pi. So derivative in time of the mass of is, the, is zero. And this side is, this is a divergence. So it also has mass zero. Uh, more interesting is the second moment again. In the, if you compute the second moment, uh, first, what you see is that the second quantity here, the divergence from operator, if you multiply by x squared and integrate by parts, uh, this is the computation. You may not remember that I showed you at the beginning to show you the, the, the second moment identity. Uh, using that, using simply using that, you see that this is zero. The second moment of this is identically zero. So what do we need? What we need is that the second moment of this quantity is zero in order to improve the approximation. And, uh, and that means precisely that this integral is zero or the derivative of this quantity here is zero. And that means that the integral of u times x squared is constant. If I compute that integral, yeah, if I, if I make it explicit, remember that u has, no, it's not in L1, okay? So you see kind of big number here because I am cutting off at square root of t. Uh, at the end, what we find is that the second moment is given by lambda squared times log of square root of t over lambda. And so the requirement is this, that this is constant. And eventually um, that if we solve for lambda, we find that lambda of t is a constant over square root of log of t at main order. So this is the formal reason why you can improve the approximation. Yeah? Um, now, um, uh, for the, the proof, the actual proof goes along uh, similar lines. In fact, we start with a lambda of t that at main order decays in the right way, but an, an alpha of t that is one plus some, uh, I give some flexibility in the alpha because I need to choose it later. And then I, uh, I let u be simply the, the, the this initial ansatz, the, which is the same I already considered, plus some uh, bar free, okay, plus some remainder. And this remainder, I choose it in this way. Yeah, this uh, phi is uh, uh, the, an inner correction, which is the one that I already found, times some cutoff. I cut, I cut it off, actually, at a finite distance. In fact, it's enough that I do it as a self -seeing. Uh, plus some phi outer, which is uh, the outer contribution of the, of the equation. Um, if you use these conventions and then we impose that these corrections, phi inner and phi outer, satisfy certain couple system, what we call the inner outer gluing system, that leads us to the following. It leads us to um, an elliptic system, in which if you take into account the local form, that the operators uh, assume, that the operator, the linearized operator LU assumes, uh, then what you see, first of all, is that this linearized operator in reality looks, it's in the radial functions, okay? Looks like a six dimensional Laplacian. I mean, it's Laplacian plus this time. So you can think of it as a 6D Laplacian, but it's a two dimensional operator. So keep that in mind. And then if I impose that this uh, phi outer phi inner satisfy this uh, this system, yeah. Uh, then I will have a solution of the initial problem. Okay, um, just to mention what is special about this uh, these couplings about the coupling term between the outer and the inner regimes. This is the equation. This I mean this equation looks very much like the one I already solved with the elliptic argument with the Fleckham alternatives. You need to do a theory in order to solve this. But the condition that you ask for having phi inner uh, decaying, why, why do you want phi inner decaying, the inner contribution decaying? The reason is this, is because in the outer coupling, you see this gradient of eta where it is the cutoff. So this is only supported near the, 
far, far away region. And this comes times the gradient of the thinner. So if the thinner decays, decays sufficiently fast, then you expect that the, the, this coupling becomes small, okay? So if the thinner is small, then uh, if you can manage to find thinner small, then these two equations are essentially uncoupled. This is the bottom, okay? And what we need is the second moment of this equal to zero if I want to, if I want to find uh, the, the, if I want to use some uh, argument for uh, of elliptic type, but I, you can adapt it in the, in the, in fact, in the, to the parabolic setting. In fact, in the parabolic setting, you, you what we are able to prove is that if you have a behavior like this, a decay in space sufficient, sufficiently fast and certain decay in time, then uh, you can actually find a nice solution phi that decays with the right rate uh, under these two conditions, yeah. Uh, okay, um, just let me point out uh, some consequences of, of the method of construction. One uh, that is quite interesting is that we can recover the co a construction of solutions that actually blow up at several different points in finite time. Mm. Uh, this was not known because the, the methods were essentially very symmetric method of construction. Uh, and um, what we find is that this uh, solution uh, has now this form, again, it's a bubble, but where the bubble has this more complicated form, which is slightly smaller in reality than the self-similar uh, shape, which is T minus T to the one half. And there were previous results anyway in, in, along these lines, mm -hmm. as I mentioned before. Uh, Another, another, another thing that is quite interesting that is uh, new eh, is that we can also find solutions that not only blow up at different points, but that blow up with higher multiplicity at a single point. Of course, they cannot be radially symmetric and they do concentrate, the, the construction corresponds to concentration around, um, around a polygon. Um, in, in, in fact, that the, the profile, the, the the profile it has now this form, which is a correction of a self-similar ones where the concentration is happening at the square root of t minus t rate points, points around the origin uh, where these AJs have to satisfy this equation. Okay? And, uh, and, and in fact, uh, you have a polygonal solution of this form. Yeah? Uh, this result had been obtained, had, was obtained formally before by uh, Seki Sujiyama and Velasquez, yeah. uh, some years ago. Anyway, uh, this type of argument, in, in fact, uh, is also applicable to, to, to all other problems that, again, have uh, similar features of bubbling, blow up, and so on. Uh, I actually don't, don't have much time to, to, to speak about it. Um, in fact, you have this equation, which is quite famous too, is called the harmonic mass flow from R2 into S2, uh, which is a classical problem. This is a, a del2 gradient flow of, a, of the Dirichlet energy when U takes values in, uh, in S2. And uh, what we are able to, to find, and this is uh, new, I mean, many people have worked in this problem. In fact, it is known that you have blow up at only at a number, a finite number of uh, points. And, and, and you can say something about the energy. The local energy is four pi. It cannot be worse than four pi. However, uh, the problem has an intrinsic instability, which is something we discovered, uh, that makes quite complicated finding uh, solutions with multiple blow up. Also, the problem is in reality a system. This is a vector valued one. And uh, we are able to find solutions that blow up at a finite number of points with the so-called, uh, with profiles given now by the so-called one connotation of harmonic mass. Uh, anyway, so there is a long story in this problem. And what we are able to find is that there is a solution that blows up in finite time at any given finite set of points uh, with certain specific profiles and where the, you can actually estimate this blow up rate in this form. 
Um, and in fact, the energy approaches uh, multiples of, uh, I mean, a sum of direct deltas plus something more regular. Um, anyway, I, I, I don't have time to tell you about the construction. The construction is in fact uh, some, some, somehow involved because of the vector values form, but the principle follows exactly in exactly the same way. Maybe an important difference is that the equation from which you recover now the, um, the lambda of t, the scaling parameter is actually non-local, it's an integral equation. This problem is much more non-local than the other. Yeah, so it's not just a differential equation and that creates, that, that is a kind of big headache, but at the end we can, we manage. So uh, I will stop here, so thank you very much.